And of course, the next thing to do is just to do a test fit and just make sure that, you know, nothing's sitting proud of, you know, the outside too much because otherwise it's not going to go, go back into the, the outer casing. So I think that's going to be fine. So the next step is we'll start pulling apart this motor. And one thing that I did notice with the other one that I didn't, uh, well obviously I learned from that one, is that you can actually see in these slots here, that's actually where like the the brushes that, that touch the armature or whatever in there. Now to get the motor out and, and in, what you actually want to do is put something in there and pull those out of the road. Otherwise, you know, you run the risk of actually bending those. And if you bend them like too much, you're going to damage them. And it's, you know, you don't get replacements for that sort of thing. You'd actually have to fabricate something or dodge something up. So that's something I learned. Um, so obviously to get this apart, it's just a matter of knocking these little tabs just out of the road. And I've got the center punch that I'll use for that again. And then that should just basically lift out obviously once you get those little bits out of the road. Okay, with a little bit of effort and actually not very much swearing this time, I managed to get this out and if you have a look in here, you can actually see that those little uh, brushes that I was talking about, now they're sort of, they're almost like forks of uh, some sort of metal. So you can see if you just pull that, you're going to bend them. So you've got to get something in there just to sort of pry them away in opposite directions just so that you can get get it off without any drama then you can get in there put a bit of grease in that bearing um, I'll put a bit of grease in there as well but I mean it looks actually very clean in there there's almost no issues there at all so anyway we'll do that we've gone this far we might as well get everything done okay Okay, so there's probably a tool for this, <clears throat> but what I ended up using is I just uh, found a capacitor with some nice long legs, stuck it in there, and gave it a twist. And as you can see, it brings those apart, and that allows you to get your, your shaft back in there. If you don't do that, like I said, you're going to end up twisting those and making a big mess of it. And yes, I did that on the CT7000. Okay, so the grease I'm going to use again is this uh, Tamiya Serra grease. Seems to work quite alright. Um, they list it as being safe for pretty much everything. So I'm just going to use a bit of that. And uh, we'll reassemble this motor. You see I've got them apart. It allows me to push the motor in quite easily. There you go. There. No bending or twisting of those uh, brushes. So, yeah, that worked very nicely. So now that's back together, all we got to do is just tap these back in, just so that it uh, holds, you know, nice and firmly and doesn't come apart while it's. Uh, place back inside the unit then it's just a matter of we'll just uh, resolder everything back together and then essentially that's it we'll just uh, reinstall the motor and hopefully that will solve the issue okay here I've just test fit the uh, motor back into its casing as you can see the capacitor is clearing nothing's touching anything that it shouldn't so I think this will be right to go next part is obviously we've got to cut a new piece for in here um, that like I said is probably going to be made out of a bit of cork or something like that um, anyway that'll be an after lunch job because uh, I'd like to finish this right now and uh, yeah so I think it's coming together well okay here we are basically at the end of this motor repair now uh, what I found is that the cork that I was planning on using basically just too brittle just falls apart I did have uh, some thick felt so I've decided to use that and I think it actually approximates the thickness uh, much more closely 
I've put it like a small uh, cross cut in there and that just allows the screwdriver to go through so that you can still get to that adjustment port there. So all that needs to be done now is this being put back into there, the tabs being hammered back across and then we just refit the motor. So the next uh, thing that I'll do is I'll put this base plate back on and then we'll get to soldering it back in. Okay, I've got this uh, bottom plate back on, just hammered it in, it's uh, sitting nice and snug and tight there now. I did test the motor once more with the 9 volt, it works, um, seems to have, you know, enough torque. So what we'll do now is we'll uh, solder these back in and uh, put the mech unit back into the, uh, into the deck and we'll throw some tapes through it. Alright, so that should be the end of this repair. Yep. Okay, so this is the completed mech unit now with the motor installed. We'll just turn it around and have a look at it. Okay, so there it is. So hopefully that's uh, going to solve the issue. If that's not it, then I'm probably, you know, out of ideas because I've done pretty much everything else, you know, I've lubed all the shafts, taken everything apart, cleaned um, everything that I could think of. So it really left me with, maybe it was the motor as the, the final sort of point. So anyway, the next thing to do is to stick this back into the unit and we'll play some tapes. <laughs> 